Good Monday afternoon and at the top of our news leaderboard, leader, leaderboard at this hour, results of the latest major pollster survey show, among others, nearly 4 of 10 adult Filipinos are in the Marcos Jr. bandwagon. This latest number represents a 2% uptick from the last Tugon ng Masa poll held from August 28 to September 4 this year, underscoring a noticeable uptrend in pro-Marcos Jr. administration support all throughout this year. Other results show a 7% support for the opposition, up from 5% in the previous quarter, while only 15% continue to support the Duterte family and their political allies, identifying themselves as pro-Duterte. Likewise, 26% of those sampled assert themselves as politically independent, indicating a 5% drop from the previous second quarter, while 14% identified themselves as not leaning toward any or politically undecided. President of the United States Joe Biden flew to the battered cities of Florida on Sunday to survey the extent of the damage left by monster Hurricane Milton that hit the western part of the Florida panhandle last Monday, sweeping northward and across the rest of the state, leaving Tampa, Sarasota, St. Petersburg, and Grove City, among others, in its wake before exiting into the Atlantic Ocean. After seeing the aftermath of Milton's wrath from above, to include a huge piece of Tropicana Stadium, Milton tore at its height. President Joe Biden saw the damage up close on the ground in his walkthrough with emergency response fallen palm trees beside piled up debris on street corners, heaps of mattresses, sidings, busted garage doors, refrigerators, microwave ovens, and kitchen appliances, and cabinets lined up on the roadside. Biden praised the president's tremendous spirit of cooperation in helping each other clean up and put up some sense of order despite the damage and devastation. Likewise, the president said power had been restored to 2 million households from the 3 million that lost electricity during Milton's destructive sweep. In addition, more fuel distribution sites were scheduled to open Sunday. State Emergency Operations Center said Biden also announced a $612 million package in new federal assistance for the victims of Hurricanes Helen and Milton. The coalition government of Israel, led by Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, has had little compunction in striking suspected enemy-held areas in Gaza and Lebanon, even with innocent civilians of children and women, journalists and relief workers around or in the mix. In his crusade against Hezbollah, Netanyahu issues his latest warning to UN peacekeepers to leave areas up for bombardment or airstrikes. VOA's Arash Arabasadi tells us more. Israel's air defenses light the night sky following a Hezbollah rocket barrage early Sunday morning. The fighting comes as Hezbollah continues hitting northern Israel for what the Western-identified terror group says is its support for Palestinians in Gaza after the October 7 Hamas terror attacks on Israel that led to all-out war. While Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon continue cross-border attacks, civilians seek cover in a bomb shelter in the Israeli city of Haifa. And in recent days, Israeli strikes injured five UN peacekeepers known as UNIFIL in parts of Lebanon, where strikes across the country have killed 1,400 people as of September, according to Lebanon's health ministry. The ministry does not differentiate between Hezbollah fighters and civilians. This is a serious development. And, UN and UNIFIL reiterates that the safety and security of UN personnel and property must be guaranteed and that the inviolability of UN premises must be respected at all times. Israel has made clear in public statements that it's not targeting attacks on the Lebanese people or UNIFIL, but rather Iran-backed Hezbollah. Following news of the injuries to UN peacekeepers, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu both issued an apology and a warning. It is time you take UNIFIL out of Hezbollah's strongholds and combat areas. Your refusal to evacuate UNIFIL soldiers makes them hostages in the hands of Hezbollah. It endangers them as well as our soldiers. Parts of Lebanon have now been reduced to rubble and dust following Israeli strikes a scene similar to Gaza, and one the White House does not want to see repeated. We cannot and will not uh, see Lebanon turn into Gaza, into another Gaza. Uh, that is not what we want to see. 
the suffering in both Gaza and Lebanon uh, adds even greater urgency, uh, as you've heard from us, uh, to our efforts uh, certainly to end the conflicts and lay a foundation for lasting peace and security in the region. Meanwhile, Israelis in Tel Aviv took to the streets for their weekly protests against Netanyahu's government on Yom Kippur, the highest of Jewish holidays. They continued demanding a ceasefire to help broker a hostage release deal to free those still held by Hamas in Gaza following the October 7 attacks. Arash Arbasadi, VOA News. And that's all for this afternoon's Breaking Stories. Join us on you later in the evening for the latest news breaking here and elsewhere on the planet. This is Denise Osorio reminding you all to stay, to always stay connected by catching the news right here. And thank you for watching PTV News Now.